All right, man. I will say that we're about to talk about the pros and cons and everything about this map, but I will say it is gorgeous. It looks very good, especially with the very big trees. Welcome. We have some low elo madness on a map called Bog Islands. Now, I don't know exactly who's been voting on the map pool, but someone and their friends said, let's vote in Bog Islands and let's make life nasty for people who don't really understand how to play it. Um, Bog Islands has a lot of food on your little starting island. You have water buffaloes, which have 150 food. You then have three rhinos. I, I think occasionally you get elephants. No, actually, I think it's always rhinos. That's 1,200 food total. So just tons of food. And then you have some fish to take in the middle. Uh, now, Applesome, I believe, is the player who has either favorited this or at least has left it open. Because I, I looked at Applesome's profile... And Applesome is like, give me some buffalo over here. Um, Applesome had played Bog Islands once or twice this week. So I don't know if it's a favorite situation or if it's uh, just a map that happens to be showing up from time to time. But a lot of people ban Bog Islands. A lot of people do not like this, myself included. I tried to give it a chance the other day. And you, you end up fighting with so much water control with Navy in the mid game and I just can't stand when you have to click docks and ships how it's like ding 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 dinging all the time I, I just couldn't stand it so I had to ban it myself but I did immediately say like hey I want to see what these low elo people are doing on this map so here we are uh, so Applesome playing as the new Civ the Dravidians and then in the blue we have Aza X playing as the Saracens and I also checked Aza's profile I did play Bog Islands once previously was playing as the Malay in that one. No one voted for Bog Islands. It was a dev pick. Ah, I see. I see. Okay, makes a lot more sense. I was going to say, how do you get that many people to vote in on Bog Islands? Well, okay, so at higher elo, what you would focus on here is you would want to rush to fuelage as quickly as possible and control the water. Because this terrain is amphibious terrain, so you can run on it, walk on it, whatever. Uh, but ships can be on it as well. And so only this tiny little island is safe from ships. And ships are stronger than anything you can really make on land. Now, that is not to say that <laughs> these guys are going to make ships. I don't actually expect that, which is what I think is going to make it funny. But why would you pick Bog Islands? There's a chance that this is so low elo that Red honestly just picks Bog Islands because of all the food at the start. Because that's all Red's taking right now. Red's like, give me all the food. Eight buffaloes already and is now taking rhino number two. Hasn't chopped any wood this game. And is about to chop down this gigantic tree. There we go. Can, can we explain, like, this is just an Age of Empires thing, but isn't it funny if you really stop and think about it? Okay, that actually looks really funny if we rewind. This is a massive tree, okay? And this trunk is, is just so thick, thick with two Cs. And then somehow it gets chopped down. <laughs> and it just looks so much smaller. That's funny to me, man. It's funny how normal that is for us. Though I suppose normal for most of us is not with the big trees anyways, so. Are there mangroves on this map? Yeah, yeah these are mangroves. So I'll tell you a funny story. So um, I have a constant battle between Tristan, who is who I am. You know, that's me as a person. And T90 official. Because I've dedicated so much of my life to Age of Empires. And then, you know, I, I occasionally, you know, try and focus a little bit more on Tristan. You know, the human as opposed to the content creator. And a lot of those, a lot of the times these things mix, right? Because uh, it's, it's kind of who I am. I am T90 in a way. So, uh, you know, I, I try and find a good balance where I can. Uh, and I was on a, a little, little hike with my girlfriend. And this is a while ago, like a year and a half ago or something. And we encountered mangroves. Because we live in Florida, and where we were, there's a lot of mangroves. And they looked really nice, and it was really cool um, where we were and what we are seeing. And so it was a nice little romantic walk, you know, spending some time with the lady. And she's like, oh, this is, this is so beautiful, isn't it, baby? Isn't this just so, so relaxing, so nice? I go, I hate mangroves. Those things are so annoying. You can never wall between those wood lines. And then I was like, oh, yeah, um... Yeah, they look really good because they are really awkward. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks very thick, but there's always holes with certain types of trees in Age of Empires 2. And mangroves is one of them. 
The other one's Baobab. Can't stand Baobab. Don't think I've seen Baobab. I think they're from Africa or whatever, so... Uh, hey, Red, by the way, you can't go Feudal Age because you didn't build your second Dark Age building. Red's, like, trying to read the tech tree right now, trying to find out what's happening. Okay, and there we go. Villager's heading over here to just make a mill. You will notice, though, that Blue made the mill a while ago, made the lumber camp a while ago, has kept the TC working more frequently, and Blue is also making a dock. So, again, Red has picked this map before. I'm not sure that Red has a great idea of the best way to play the map based on what I've seen. Yeah, I've never never been to Africa. Not sure if I'll ever make it to Africa. But, yeah, maybe I'll see Baobab someday and say, screw those things, too. Should you use a standard water map build order on this map? Yep. Yep. Uh, your your deep fish are always going to be towards the center. It can be really tricky, though, because of all the trees in the middle. You know what's funny? There's always a buffalo. And so if you're fighting on water, you know when sheep change hands, you hear that little bloop bloop. Um, that little noise keeps going off because the buffalo keeps changing hands. He gets very confused. There, it always seems to be one buffalo. Oh, oh, look, there's another buffalo. Just trapped out here. I don't know. Did it flood or something? <laughs> I don't know how he ended up here. Hmm. Speaking of buffalo. Yeah, Red's got one there hiding in the trees. Red will be in Fuel Age faster, and Red is now adding a dock. And Red also wants to make a barracks. Uh, Red scouting is all auto scout, I believe. Uh, I guess water buffaloes can probably swim, right? Yeah, I, I was thinking about it with my Age of Empires brain. <laughs> I guess water buffaloes should be able to swim. I'm pretty sure all forms of buffalo can probably swim, so... Okay, fishing ship now for red. I was wondering if we were going to see anything other than that. We do have a fishing ship from blue. And blue is able to actually find some tuna out here, so that's nice. Someone said earlier blue has more eco-intelligence. And I can agree that blue transitions a little bit more. But at the same time, blue didn't make a mining camp for the stone or the gold. I don't really know. And ding, 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 we have the town bell. And ooh, oh, the moves. The moves from Red. I don't know if Red was controlling that or if that was auto scout. I actually think Red is controlling that now. And the villagers are not happy. They are not happy that the scout ran over their friend's farm. And they are here to show the scout who's boss. However, they should probably stop chasing the scout now. Blue, blue, don't. <laughs> I, okay, I want to say don't chase the scout. <laughs> But Red stopped moving it. So, well done. <laughs> well done. Red's going to lose the scout. Worth it. Now, meanwhile, Blue is housed really badly. So, all these new people that you paid for, they can't come into the town yet. You need pop space. This is a bad one. This is a really, 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 really bad one for Blue, who is so focused on the scout. Red, meanwhile, has found some tuna. Um... And is farming. So got the... I like it. You have the rice farms because it's on the water. <laughs> Not really how I would suggest playing the map. Again, any water control and you're dead. This is... At low elo, it's a much better map because there's so many different things you can do. At higher elo, it's just... Demos and fire galleys and galleys. Hmm. Okay. The beauty of Lel is you never know when a move is good or bad. Anything could work. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you can't even say if something's bad. Like, if I say, okay, man at arms for this time, this is not good timing. This is not very good. Yeah, but you know what else is not good? It's not having mining camps for your gold and, and for your stone. Uh, and, uh, you know, not having zero walls and having zero military. So, like, that, you're, you're spot on with that. At lower elo, anything can happen. I think that's why a lot of people enjoy watching this. Uh, comeback potential is always there. And wow, we are going to see... I was wondering why we saw stone income. Sometimes players would just send a villager to stone for later. But blue wants to build towers here and fortify the shoreline. Meanwhile, red is making a fire galley. And fire galley is very strong uh, up against galleys, which is what we're going to see from blue as well. But, you know, against towers, maybe not so strong. And we'll see where blue goes with this. Blue... 
didn't have a lot of scouting yet. His auto scouts is working. Do you guys ever, I, I know a lot of you guys here watching on stream, you, you watch a lot of the live ones, right? So you get to see some good ones, some bad ones, whatever. But are you guys getting that feel that this game is just going to just gonna be quality the rest of the way? Some games just get you, you know? And maybe I'm crazy. At the end of the day, I'm just some dude sitting alone in a room talking to a computer screen. But this game feels so good. So cool. And it'll probably go Castle Age too, right? Like, red probably won't be able to kill blue. Blue could maybe do something, but you never know. Red could probably deal with it. Two minutes and 45 seconds of TC idle time for both. Here comes the fire galley. Now, the scout died here. So if I were this fire galley captain, I would say I need to go see if, if he's recoverable. Can we revive him, you know? They probably have the med kit on the ship. It's in one of those boxes. And here they go. It came back to the exact same spot. <laughs> Now here's blue, and blue probably doesn't really understand the water meta all that much. Uh, but blue is trying to lure red back to the tower, and red says, "No, I will not let that happen." Supplies for blue. I mean, blue's just doing everything. Blue's like, "What haven't I tried yet?" We have a fire galley on the way. We've got a galley, a scout, militia, spear. No click man at arms while we're at it, because that that makes sense. Meanwhile, here's a scout for blue. Now, red is very upset about this. Red had a peaceful scout earlier and now wants kills. And the town bell has been rung. And the revenge kill there on the scout. So we have both auto scouts having gone down at this point. Blue probably upset about that. Blue's probably like, well, you shouldn't have trampled on my farms. Red, very pleased with how things are going possibly and is on the way to Castlage. So good little bit of control here for red. Uh, you know, didn't create a villager the last two minutes as we saw all this micro. Blue, though, gonna have some, some stressful times, I think. And that galley... Uh, it's so close to going down, but no. Blue's gonna save that. Huh. Yep, okay, fire galley. Now it's a 1v1 wa fire war. It's always funny how, like, you know, you're sending fire towards a, something that is apparently flammable. And then once you stop shooting the fire, it just doesn't burn, you know? <laughs> like, somehow, you know, if you burn that thing 75% of the way, it doesn't burn the rest of the way down. The stage of Empire's things. Wow, okay, so this guy, he shows up to his new job today, right? And they're telling him about the old scout and how much they loved him and how good he was. And he's like, oh, really? He's like, if you don't mind me asking, why did he quit? They're like, well, he didn't quit, actually. He died when 18 arrows hit him in the back while doing the job you're about to fulfill. He's like, oh, okay, do you mind if I get bloodlines? They're like, yeah, we can find some room in the budget for that. Go ahead, get bloodlines. That's probably smart. We don't want to have to go through the hiring process of hiring someone else. And now he's like, I don't know if this is his training chip. Like, like he's doing the risky job, but the, the guy who's training him wants to be in a boat because the boat's safer. But now they're heading together. This is his first scouting mission ever. He used to just be a cashier before this. He wanted to change his, uh, change his, his life, change his job, challenge himself a little bit more. Here we've got a fire ship and a galley. Fire ship goes down. But yeah, I mean, this guy, first day on the job. And he says, hey, this isn't too bad. I mean, if you can get over the whole killing thing, it's not that bad. By the way, red doesn't have loom. And this is, uh, this is a concern. You've got flames and you've got a very motivated scout killing you, red. Uh, and I would like to see some type of reaction at some point. I mean, red's got scouts somewhere? Oh, they're over here. Okay. Painful. And, well, we have the fires and we have the scouts. Very similar strategy, though. I, I guess Red had thought about this before Blue showed up with the strategy. And now this guy, he went from thinking he was the best scout ever to realizing, oh, okay, I've got no support whatsoever. When I signed up for this job, I was told that I would have more support. But uh, I guess I guess that's why they paid me so much. He's dead. Hey, we got another one. Now, I can't do a story <laughs> for every freaking new scout, man. 
<laughs> I didn't expect to see more scouts because they're... Well, actually, blue isn't in Castle Age. And it doesn't even matter because blue is killing everything because red refuses to get loom, which would beef up the villagers. Like, this is really bad for red. Red has lost nine eco this game now. But red does have fire ship. So he's got, he's got the bigger ships. That said, two fire galleys should be better than one fire ship still. And the, the scouts just continue to kill villagers here. Oh, man. Guys, I've seen Applesome play before. This is not a new player to low elo. Like, I've seen his player play before. And it is crazy to me, you know, after however many games, as we have the town bell now, that we are seeing something like Lou missed out on here. This might be a 50-50 trade. Ooh, 1 HP. Blue clicks up to Castle Age. Blue has to be happy with that, though. Now, Blue also has to be scared of what's to come next. 13 eco killed. Red having some problems. Red needs to get back to producing villagers. This is going to queue up villagers out of this TC. And queuing villagers out of this TC. Not bad. I also noticed this one villager way over here. Uh, has been mining stone for a while. Now Red's going to drop a castle. Once these villagers move. I don't know how many of you wear contacts out there. But my contacts are bothering me today. And it sucks. Where did Red send the 1 HP ship? I must have died. Apologies for missing that. I was doing with my contact. Okay. Uh, we'll see a monastery here for Red. I mean, Red should catch up with the Vill count, no problem. Blue is making more towers. And look, I, I just love low elo players and how they queue up stuff. Like, this is classic. Demo. Galley. Fire galley. Fishing ship. One of everything, please. We don't really know what to make, so let's just do that. Blue has learned, though, that the scout rush is very good. And Blue has actually sent more scouts to the same spot. Just to keep Red off of gold, I guess. Now I'm going to move the scouts around. And we have another bell. Oh, and to make matters worse, the villagers leave the castle. Oh, not the bell! I have a video. It's TC Tip video from T90. T90 TC Tip, man. Uh, so many villagers aren't working, but this guy's like, hey, you going to help us? He's like, sure, I've got more men on the way. Here come the man-at-arms. Here they go. And these are the recruits, I guess. Scout rush happening. Blue being a beast right now. Is Blue creating villagers at home? Nope. Because Scout Micro is hard, and I guess Blue is now housed. Um, fire ship. Now, if it stood here, the Scouts wouldn't actually be able to attack. Look, at, okay, okay. Wait, does Blue, does Red know this? Oh my god! Red's a Micro God! Okay, no, Red fled. Okay, I want to show you this. Fled? What do you say when someone flees? What's past tense of flee? It's not they fleed, right? It would be fled the situation, but it just sounded weird to me. So, at low elo, we have this thing called over micro. And sometimes I'll just say, let your units do... Fled didn't sound right to me for some reason. I'm sorry. Forget, forget that. Just listen to what I'm about to say. Lower elo players, they do too much sometimes. Sometimes you just have to let your units sit there and kill stuff. So the fire galley starts off killing this scout. Watch this. So he's killing this scout. And then Red's like, oh, I'm being attacked. Okay, well, actually, I don't want it to attack that one. We're going to click this one. So now he hits the middle one. He says, yeah, okay. So the other one's weak. This one's weak. No, let's actually hit this one. <laughs> so instead of killing one unit, he doesn't actually kill anything because he switched targets there. <laughs> but does recognize that at least the scouts are going to win. So that's good. Um, Blue's still having housing problems. And blue still microing the scouts, though. And red still having villager problems because of no loom. So the scouts are doing work. Now the fire ship's attacking. Now blue runs away. Blue, I mean, you look at blue and you say, wow, this guy's micro is incredible. It's really good micro, but, you know, it comes at a cost because blue has just forgotten to do stuff at home this whole time. Villagers in queue, stuff in the docks all queued up. Can't make anything. It's going to make a tower. 
I don't know, maybe Blue is someone who plays without sound and doesn't hear the noise when you get housed, because right now this is a pretty bad situation. Close game. Uh, you know, still seeing some navy, too. I like the mix of land and water. I think this is kind of how the devs wanted this to be played, but then they made 90% of the map accessible by water. So, not really going to happen. And Blue even recognizes to upgrade these ships, which is awesome. Blue, if you don't make houses, though, I might scream. And a lot of people like to sleep to my contents. I really don't want to have to do that. Okay, there's finally houses. And blue, stone and gold over here. Eating some turtles. I don't know. They maybe put the turtles into some turtle soup over here. Um, Another town center for red. Red made the man-at-arms, but... I was going to say isn't too interested in killing the scout. Is probably going to go do that now. As we see wheelbarrow for red. Now when you go to click wheelbarrow, you could also look and see loom. But maybe red just doesn't know about that. Hmm. I like blue's towers. I love how blue is making has made multiple docks. I love blue's aggression. If I were to place money on a player here, I would place money on blue. Blue also does make... A little bit of everything. Which can sometimes be bad, though. <laughs> this is wild. Knight, cav archer, man at arm, spearmen, archers, scouts, fishing ships, villagers, demo, fires, war galleys, camels. <laughs> I mean, he's not missing much. A monk, a scorpion, mangonel, and I think, and I guess mameluke, which blue may or may not make if a castle ever goes up. <laughs> Crossbow. <laughs> Crossbow, Cav Archer. It's so cute. I love it. This castle, though, for red is going to be really nice because I think blue wanted to fight in this area with the navy. Herbal medicine. What? Red's trying to get high out here. Herbal medicine. I mean, that means you heal faster when you are inside of castles. I don't know if that's really being used. And red is now going to make armored elephant. So, a bit of a ram here. I, I wonder if Red recognizes what this does. I, I did see that Red had picked Dravidians in the other game on Vlog Islands, whenever that was, a couple days ago, maybe. I thought it would be full water control because Dravidians are really good on water. and it But it's also a new sieve. So, I think Red could just be thinking, well, let's let's play around with it and see if, what we like. Um, Castle here for blue. Castle here for blue. Long line of fortifications for blue. And here comes the demo, the fires, and the galleys. Way more than what red has on water, so it should be amazing here. I think a lot of people just see the word medicine, and they think, well, a lot of my people are hurt, so maybe medicine will help. True, I didn't think about that logic. I mean, I, I don't think the situation really seems like a situation where herbal medicine helps. Maybe they think that the villagers would just heal over time, right? Instead of having to do something about it. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, we'll have a demo pop, but the demo will not be enough to save the dock here. This is a big problem for Red. Red needs to have both docks producing. And that demo, bam. Like I said, not enough to save the dock. Man at arms here, though. Blue is to pull back. Maybe the dock will be saved. Okay, this villager is just still doing his job and chopping the tree. Another demo will come out now. And bam. Okay. Meanwhile, red goes up to him. And blue's making more navy. But blue must realize this is working really well. I don't need, why do I need anything else? So let's just do this. Now for red, you're still okay as long as you don't panic too much. This is obviously not good for you. I like how he's healing up. Nice demo shot too. I like how he's healing up his man at arms because that's important right now. But more docks. You can you don't even have to place docks around here. You can place docks in the little sand. So dock here, dock here. I think docks would be really important. Also built a TC down here, which is interesting. I think Dravidians do get fast fire ship. Now Saracen Galley is something I didn't mention earlier, actually fire faster too. So Saracens, I think, are a solid sieve to have here. Look at this villager repairing behind this. Just giving this fire ship time to sneak in. 
Sneaky, sneaky. Blue realizes this now, and Blue says, now. And Red trying to do a little dance. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. This could be fine. We got two more fires on the way. Two more fires could do it. And Red will be in the Imperial Age. Red, one relic. Has not had the best game in terms of kills and deaths. But economically is ahead. And man, these guys are really solid. Red, I, what I'd like to see Red do is what some other low elo players do and back up to the castle. That's that's something that a lot... It's like a, a common strategy at low elo. is just sneak towards your castles and then they don't realize. Hmm. Okay, so you get plus 200 wood when you arrive to the next stage of Dravidians. Not something you really need here. We do have another dock for Red. He's making demos in it. So, three docks now. We'll call it two and a half because this dock just continues to flirt with death. Lots of sixes at the top left right now. Don't look. Six, 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 six for red. And, <laughs> wait a second. Guys, this is epic. <laughs> red with the sneak armored elephant. Now, this is a ram. Dravidians don't get actual rams, so they get this instead. Okay, Blue notices it, though. <laughs> that was sneaky, man. And Red also wanted to drop a castle over here. I'm guessing because there's stone and gold there. And believe it or not, the villagers might actually make it. Hmm. Now, the Mameluke sees him. Uh, James, don't ruin it for us. Don't, James, what are you doing, man? Oh, God. All the villagers are going to die. Great awareness for Blue. Honestly, probably would have seen this regardless. I did pull back all the Navy, though, to deal with that elephant. Also, interesting to see this tech. We have Zealotry, so that gives camels more HP. I, it's one of my favorite unique techs. You never see that. So Red says, okay, those villagers died. These guys, this is their family. They've heard about it. And they said, no, we're going to make that castle at home. Fast fire ship for Red. Again, like, my opinion right now is just full on water. Honestly, anything else you make should just die to Navy. Full on fast fires, demos, galleons, all that's fine. Uh, screw everything else. They probably don't really have that opinion. Particularly blue. Blue likes to make a lot of different stuff. That castle looks amazing, though, with big trees. It's very snug. Very snug. Snug as a bug in a rug. As I think that's like a childhood freight. Anyways, I don't know why that came to my mind. Blue just now realizing this castle's going up. Could have been denied easily, actually. But castle goes up now, and now the castle's in a good spot for red. And not really a spot you want to be hanging around in if you're blue. And here comes the demos! Bam! And the castle fire helps. And wow, what a what a good five minutes here for red. This is this is just a player who doesn't necessarily know what to make. Uh, lots of scouts, lots of mamelukes, cab archers, a mix of everything. Is something going to click in Blue's mind right now that says, I need to make more on water? I love the fact that Blue's making more Mamelukes. I I don't actually know how Mamelukes perform against ships. <laughs> Certainly against demos, it'd probably be a problem, but maybe they'd actually be okay against fire ships. Um, so many resources for Red. Who continues to queue up ships. Is also now making the Teresa Day! And also getting long swordsmen and pikemen, you know, because just in case. These three men at arms are still hanging out with the monk from earlier. This ship looks freaking awesome. The best part about it, though, is the sail. The sail is by far the best part. Um, lovely, lovely ship. Does benefit from ranged upgrades in the blacksmith, though. So not having fletching, which is a few age upgrade, and everything beyond that is very, very bad. But it is going to be a little uh, worrisome for Blue. Like, Blue probably doesn't understand that ship because it's new. Blue's just going to see a water tank and probably be scared. Okay, question. I want a yes or no in chat for my audience. Is Blue ever going to have more than 15 of the same type of unit? Look at this. Now, Villager doesn't count. 15. It feels like that's not a lot to ask. 
But also, at the same time, it feels like it's everything to ask of Blue. I, I, I want to say yes. Also, look at this monk run away with the relic. Red wants that relic badly. Look at the look at the Teresa de go. It's so slow. <laughs> okay, there we go. Kills the monk. Uh, a lot of people are saying no. Okay, so about like 60% of you guys say he's never going to have more than 15 in the same unit. I am seeing him making more Mameluke, so I think it'd be okay. Also getting more monk upgrades right now. Wants to get relic number two, which is right here. Should get it. Um, are there more relics? There's actually a relic here for red. Red now getting chemistry, which tells me red remembered you can get text inside the university. And yup, chemistry, ballistics. Both of those things will help the ships and castle fire. And heated shot is actually relevant here. Your castles and your towers do more damage versus ships. Hmm. Okay, so look, he gets to seven, and he says, okay, we need other stuff now. Okay, war galleys, fire ships. But Blue is looking around a lot at different options here. Heavy demo ship is coming in. I think the fact that Blue has the ranged blacksmith upgrades is a really big deal here. I wonder if Red will ever remember that. If Red doesn't remember that, I think Red could have problems. Blue also going to have three relics. Really building up. And we've got Pikeman as the choice for Red. I guess Pikeman, I guess Red did see a lot of scouts, so makes sense. Hmm. Great game. Great game. So many different things have been seen in this game. More than you would normally ever see. Hand cannons right now for Red. Out of uh, which archery range? I don't actually see it. Oh, the forward archery range. Wow, okay. So definitely wants to push this castle, I think. We have red massing treps and getting rams and getting hand cannons. Now, how many treps should red go in with, guys? You already know the answer, okay? So I'm just going to say it. it's four, right? Don't show up with two. Don't play that game. Don't trickle it. Castles are really important buildings. Go with four. Obviously, you want to have a bit more military support in an ideal world, but two is better than one, as they say, but I'd like to see a bit more. Hmm. Nice castle from Blue. Blue really prioritizing the water for a player who isn't actually making a lot of navy. I guess Blue doesn't have the scouting here, so that's why Blue doesn't hasn't castled the resources. Like this castle from Blue as well to secure the side. And yeah, man, this is building up big time. We still don't have blue with over 15 of one unit. But to be fair, that would be the same with red as well. So. Okay, and here comes red now with the trebs. And is getting hoardings in this castle. Which gives all castles more HP, which would be really helpful here. I like how the ship is, is hidden behind the, the mangrove trees here. I, I would love to see heavy demo. Guild nets. Does Blue even know what's that what that's doing? That is helping him fish faster. Also adding farms. I like the farm expansion. That's something Red's really done a ton of recently. The Red did have more farms throughout most of the game. Okay, what a spot to be in though. On the other side of the wood line. Don't hate that at all. And now let's see Blue react to this. Now if I if I was a betting man, I would say Blue just grabs everything and just clicks the traps. Now, if you go with four, by the time they react, they have already lost their castle. Or they're, you know, they're sending units in to a very bad engagement. Let's see what two does. Okay, one treb goes down. And hey, calculated, guys. Two is enough. Blue is still in a good position to take a fight. Might not know this. Might not know how to control the units either. I like how Blue thinks this is a great time to get monk technologies. Because those, those couple monks we have, they're really going to need more technologies. Interesting timing on that. Cannon galleons are being created by Red here. I don't think Red realizes now that the Navy's here or maybe just forgot that the cannon galleons were queued. And uh, the cannon galleons, are, I think, are ejecting from the ship as well. Yeah, that could be a big problem. It's a good thing to add. 
Blue now might also realize this. Red has not noticed that corner yet either. There's a lot of stuff going on. Is Blue going to convert the dock? Oh my god, man. He's sending the monk out to convert the dock and take Red off of water. <laughs> What's funny is I think the monk will die because I think the cannon galleon's gather point is set over here. I think it will shoot it. Yeah, okay, so the conversion on the dock, probably not a strategy I'd suggest. Doesn't happen. And then meanwhile, the navies come over here. Uh, the hand cannon's doing a pretty decent job against the navy. You also have the units inside the castle for blue. And blue's panicking right now. Blue is completely panicking. Blue doesn't know what to do. He's researching hoardings. But hey, castle fire helping out. He has bracer. Red distracted, probably because the wololo on the dock. We have 117 population versus 130. Still have not seen either player actually go above 15 of the same type of unit. That's crazy to me. We have elite Mameluke. And it looks like it's going to be um, the Yurumi Swordsman. This is a crazy little unit. Now, guys, Dravidians aren't that good with raids. Dravidians, uh, they don't really have any good stable units that they can use to raid. So it is really about pushing in the main fights with this Civ. Oh, God. Blue's now converting the Cannon Galleons. That's even better than the other strategy. Only converted one, though. Elite Mameluke. Decent upgrades. Decent. And blue just holding on for now. Must have forgotten there's more units in there. Looping over here. Trying to convert another ship. Steals the ship. Says, that's my ship. Also, the Yurumis. No armor upgrades. Right into the castle fire. They're a low HP unit anyways. How's the Mameluke going to do here? Not too good. There's not many of them. Numbers is a big issue. Red now adds a fast fire ship, though. Red says, hey. Feels weird having to attack a ship I just made, but I'll do it. Meanwhile, no focus over here because life is stressful on the right side. And Red has really learned the lesson with the Trev number. Let's see if Red will use all of them. Commitment on numbers here is just going to be so crucial. How much are they going to commit? More commitment from Red onto the water. Red's got a lot back here as well. Not bad. And now, Blue finally ejects to go in after the Trebs, but there's too many of them. I think, anyways, I think they're Yurumi, even though they don't have any armor. I think they're gonna... Ooh, well... Well, here's the deal. You know, the point I bring up all the time is, if you go in with four Trebs, you'll take out the castle anyways. Don't tell me he's not gonna actually... Hold on, hold on. Please take out the castle and prove me right. Please take... Please take... So... In review, he used two trebs on one of the castles and took it out no problem. He used four trebs there and lost all the trebs. Okay, so don't listen to a word I say is basically what we've learned. Monks are not easy to control. It's crazy to me how much blue is focusing on monks. It's not easy. Also, now getting counterweights, which is a new technology. And what's that do? It increases like splash damage or something from trebs and I think siege onagers with Saracens. I don't think Blue knows that. And oh my god, the monk wanted to die. The monk does die. I think what happened there was Red tried to grab all the villagers to send them this way. And the monk was in the group that and, uh, ended up following. Now, I'm expecting a castle here for Red. Because Red hasn't scouted this corner. And Blue notices! Oh my god, Red is a late game monster. A late game monster who will not commit... To any unit. Go full Mameluke. Go full Navy. Go for something here. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Red. <laughs> okay, hold on. So I do... I have this conversation for the people who are trying to get better at the game, okay? Collectively. <laughs> and again, you know, I... I want these players to play the game as they play it. You know, I, I, I'm saying only if people want to improve, people watch for fun, people obviously also watch to uh, to improve. So we have 5,000 wood here. We have 7,000 wood here. Quick math tells me that's like 13K wood in the bank. The majority of these production buildings you're trying to build, it's going to cost wood, okay? So like you look at red, four docks, five docks, excuse me. Okay, missed that. But we have 12 cannon galleons queued up in one dock, right? 
time is of the essence here. Like, time is very important. And getting your units out is important. So having more docks or having more than, than two barracks, uh, having all that would be huge. Same with archery rangers, right? Lots of units in the queue could be out faster. This barracks is here queued up. This this barracks is not. A lot of this is probably why these guys are stuck at this elo. But, you know, it's, it's important that I note that because that's a big thing here. Now, knights for red, uh, for blue, excuse me. Maybe that's just one other thing we haven't seen a lot of from blue. But the positive thing would be is that you have decent upgrades for your Mamelukes, and that also applies to your knights. So I guess that helps. Hmm. Halb now. I think that's a good tech to be getting up against what you're seeing. Eric Technologies are also discounted with the Dravidian. Because blue currently has nothing on gold. And blue could mine this golden stone, but we'll see if blue realizes that. This is attempt number 6,000 at converting this dock. And I think the monk's actually going to convert the dock for once. It does take a while to convert docks after redemption. But should be right about now. As we see coinage! Coinage! Oh, I feel so bad! Yes, it would make sense that if you're running low on gold, you'd research coinage because, you know, coins equals money and money is gold. I mean, the coin even looks made of gold, but no, it's a noob trap. I'm so sorry, Red. The devs didn't think about how newbie and trappy this would be. That actually doesn't even work for 1v1s. That reduces the tax when you send resources to an ally and there's no allies here. Meanwhile, we've got herbal medicine for blue. We now have faith. Now, I'm just... I think blue is just getting stuff to get stuff at this point. Faith is not cheap, though. Faith is like 1,000 food, 500 gold, and it means your units resist conversion. But considering his opponent is not really converting anything, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. Now, blue is now able to focus on the left because blue is doing pretty good elsewhere. Also, exciting times. Blue is up to 12 Mamelukes. Might even get above 15. Blue sees this, I think. Oh my god, and red shows up with the cannon galleons. Blue's castle is going to go down real fast. Oh. And red's castle here might actually stay up then. Look, blue's just now realizing this. And blue now sees the trap. Dang. Also, red has so much more military now. Red's got a good mix, too. Lots on lands, but also has more water control. Blue doesn't know what to make. Now Blue's like, ah, I think I'll make rams. I haven't made one of those yet. Wow. You know, if, let's say, like, Blue's a big fan of the channel, ends up re-watching this later, and goes to his girlfriend, he's like, hey, babe, I made it into a T90 video. We should watch it together. She'd be like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Halfway through the video, she's like, you have commitment issues in the game as well because you don't make you don't commit to something steve come on steve we've been together for six years you're never gonna change i mean come on blue commit coinage <laughs> commit to something man commit to something okay wait this is a good commitment though not the coinage again we explained coinage doesn't actually help but the, the uh, Navy decision is very smart. Now, this is painful. It, queuing it all in one dock is very painful. There are more docks for this reason. But again, that was something that Red had a problem with too. The difference is Red was actually like producing out of only this barracks, producing out of only this range, producing out of only this dock, producing out of only this castle. Still was four production buildings. But hey, I mean, very nice of Steve to research coinage because now that, that just evens out the game basically. Uh, they both wasted the same amount of resources. Blue really likes monks. Really likes to make monks. Because the fact that red doesn't have any armor upgrades, that all red has is attack upgrades for infantry, it could be an issue here. Particularly if blue makes full navy, which as we've been saying is the most dominant unit on this map. A unit type on this map, no question. With... Bracer being in, with Ballistics being in, with the Galleons coming out. 
I could definitely see red running into some problems here. And blue also has a significantly greater eco. 106 villagers is crazy for this elo. And the Mamelukes are doing a pretty good job. Like, these four Mamelukes... I guess it was seven, excuse me. They've got 30 kills. 130 HP on these Mamelukes. Blue now also says, I'm going to go to Hussar now. We don't, we don't need any more of what we're doing. We're going to switch into something else now. Um, Treb's exposed. Not great. Uh, Castle Fire will help a little bit. Mamelukes, you know, will use the distraction, I guess. Oh, wow. The Trebs are even going after the Handkins. They hit a tree instead. Wow. Okay, but the Knights and Camels are doing okay. The Mamelukes there. Red's falling apart a little bit, guys. Red is making halbs, though. Which, in theory, should be good. But Red, I thought, was going to take it. Now doesn't have any push going on this side. It's actually giving blue time. Isn't there a dock over here? I think there is a dock, but you can't see it. Aha! I saw the seagulls, and that's how I knew. Um, yeah, the galleons are now massing up. 145 population for blue. More Mamelukes on the way. Heavy camel now as well. And let's just queue up some knights and camels after this. Blue has been blue has gone for virtually everything you can make as the Saracens. Even banking. Again, very confusing. It's got more coins on it. You would think that that would help you here. Doesn't really. Sorry, Steve. Dang. Red needs a push soon or this is over. And so here, Red's got the uh, the tanky ship. Does still have insane pierce armor. I still think only takes one damage. So it might actually be beneficial to mix them in. Yeah, I think Red's really going to need numbers now, particularly with the navy. Not seeing Red do that. Red did just get on this gold, which I think is an important thing. Also, we have Blue trying to convert to Treb. Not going to work out for you, old man. Sorry about that. Probably not the best way to deal with Trebs. A raiding army, though, from Blue. Who just keeps queuing up more monks. We have the town bell. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, Blue goes in for the town center. Okay, with no fletching, the town center will actually go down. These units are going to su survive a long time. I think forgetting about that blacksmith is probably the biggest mistake here for Red above everything else. It's a very hard-fought game, very interesting map. I don't know if Red's really going to understand what to do. Of course, when you ring the bell, guys, other areas of your economy that you need work and go idle. It is, I suppose, the lazy way of dealing with it, the easy way of dealing with it, but it can create some problems. As the Mamelukes, no longer Mamelukes, they're OP, man. Takes out the Trebs. Heck yeah, let's go. Now you're down a town center, you're down some Trebs, you're going to lose this town center as well. I saw something hit it, I don't know what it was. Honestly, I have no clue what that was. Uh, oh, wow, and now we have the cannon galleons. Hold, hold the phone. Hold the phone. I mean, this, this will get out of hand fast. Blue has to deal with this. Mamelukes will not help. By the way, Blue at 27 Mamelukes now. But also making a bunch of helps. So red is, red is not finished yet. Red's going to get up to 50 helps, which we'll need to counter. Um, what blue should be going for right now is navy. But blue is going for town centers. <laughs> and we'll lose these Mamelukes now. Blue also is still going in for town centers over here. Even converted the range from red. And we'll probably treb this down as well. So, okay. It's like red's only win condition now is if red's navy can somehow do this. Let's see if blue can micro against all these cannon galleons. What a great game, though. What a great game. We've got two galleons. Not enough on their own against the cannon galleons. You would need more docks. Obviously, remember, blue queued up with this dock at some point. I think it's the only dock producing. Red, red's getting massacred. But if red can somehow make this work, blue might freak out and resign. You never know. At low elo, crazy things can happen. And also, the military pop for red is probably going to be higher than blue's. It has a lot of helps. doesn't have armor, which really hurts, but still not a bad unit to have here. Wait a second. Question. How long ago was the new Saracen Unique tech introduced? 
I'm thinking maybe three or four months. Chat will have to correct me. So something that just came to my mind. The second unique tech for Saracens, it used to be Madrasa. And Madrasa was a pretty useless unique tech. I never saw anyone use it, okay? Uh, or, or like, you know, recognize that it was there and, and make use of it. But it would give you, I think, like 70 gold back every single time that you would lose a monk. Late April. Yeah, so a couple months ago. Blue's making so many monks right now. I think that Blue knew Madrasa, doesn't know Madrasa's gone, and doesn't know that this new unique tech affected his trebs and his siege, which is what they changed it to. It used to be Madrasa, now it's counterweight. Oh, it's 33% of gold return? Okay, whatever. The, the fact that Blue is making so many monks makes me think, and we can continue, sorry, that Blue might think that some gold is coming back when monks go down. I should have thought of that a little bit earlier. <laughs> Blue's like, screw you. I converted your ship. How do you like it? How does this taste? And boom. That's the moment Red resigned. A little sad, actually. A little sad. Because uh, I think that these halves are about to get some clear-ups. But yeah, this was over here. Oh, I didn't see this on the other side yet. This would maybe not work out here for Red. What a great game, though, man. What a great game. I mean, both players... Had some great plays in this game. I just think that Blue did a better job overall of keeping villagers alive and getting that economy expanded. That's honestly what I think it came down to. I can't say that Red was a worse player with the fights. And maybe it was Blacksmith upgrades too. But like so many instances where Red could have pushed and did push. You can see the KD. A few more Blacksmith upgrades there for Red. Researching Loom at some point, right? And, you know, maybe maybe producing a few more villagers here or there would have done it. Uh, gotta love the classic confusion there on coinage for both players. But, yeah, that was a great game. 253 kills versus 127. Uh, Blue definitely seemed to have a slightly better outlook as well on how this was going to develop. Obviously didn't focus on Navy quite as much as you could and probably should on this map. But, you know, the way the towers went up, the way the castles went up, it seemed like it was all planned out. I read the game plan was a bit more... Helter Skelter, a bit more all over the place. And it was interesting. You'd have water fights. You'd have land fights on either side. There was a lot of swinging back and forth there, which is rare for this elo. Now, people are going to see this, and people are going to say, wow, this map looks really fun. This is a really good game. But I'll tell you, if you play this and you want to win, just make Navy. <laughs> like, I don't want to ruin it for you. But, uh, you know, just make Navy. <laughs> um, Navy will destroy everything else. Uh, demos in wood lines. Navy takes out town centers. Jeez, Navy can even take out castles at times, depending. So um, I would say that that's probably my suggestion on how to play it. But I'm glad that it's not played like this. I wouldn't be casting it if low elo players knew that. So uh, pros and cons, I guess, to telling people. But still, an interesting one. And we also have more, so many maps that were just introduced to the pool. So. For the people who watch on YouTube later, I'll be looking at some of these newer maps that were introduced to the pool. Uh, maps we haven't casted either ever or in a long time, which should be pretty some really good games. I love it when players don't exactly know what to do. I like it when there's a lot of options. I like it when there's some confusion and people have to, uh, have to adapt and figure things out. Overall, according to this, Blue, the slightly faster player, if that means anything to you. Doesn't surprise me. I imagine a lot of this was him clicking his monks. It did feel like he was doing a little bit more in that game. Oh, yeah. How many conversions did he get? 17. He probably made way more monks, though. Actually, what was his most created unit? Mameluke. Interesting. 47. Yeah, I did, did end up getting to around 20 there near the tail end of the game.